chat to all participants because at that point everybody can see your question. So when anyone's addressing the question, we know which question is being addressed. Um, thank you very much for coming, and I am going to turn this over to Steve Ernst from Boundless Learning uh, to talk about his platform. So I will change the presenter, and thank you very much. You bet. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me, and, and welcome, everybody. Uh, happy Tuesday. I hope uh, you're looking forward to just uh, some very uh, exciting semester <laughs> starts here as, as we get ready for fall 2016. So, um, what I'll do is I'll go through, and I don't know the format, Jeff, what you pr prefer. I, I like having questions or comments at any time, but I'll leave that to you as to what is the standard that you'd like to use in the webinar, Jeff. Um, either way is fine by me. If you want to look, uh, do you do you want me to let you know about the questions that pop up in chat, or should we just address them at the end? Um, if you wouldn't mind, let me know as they as they flow in. That would be great. Sure. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to move over to, you should be able to see here a presentation. Can you see, all see that okay, Joe? Um, yes. Perfect. I'll make it large screen. What I'll do is I'll provide first a brief overview of Boundless and, and the value adds we provide to the marketplace. But then second, I'll go into a demo using the Brightspace environment, which is, I understand, uh, all campuses that are part of uh, this initiative that, uh, at USG use Brightspace. Is that correct, Jeff? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Okay. So again, feel free to ask questions, comments anytime would be great. Um, but I'll go ahead and dive in. Um, a key metric for us at Boundless has been surveys and stories related to the following. In 2014, the US Public Interest Research Group conducted a survey of over 2,000 students at 150 different academic institutions in the US. And this is the result of that survey. 65% of the students that were surveyed opted out of buying the college textbook solely due to its price. What's even more shocking, though, is the next statistic. 94% of that 65% said that they knew they were going to suffer academically by making that decision to not purchase the textbook, but they did it anyway. So, I mean, you know, one, shame on us in the higher education industry, education at large, for putting students in that predicament, right? We should not um, uh, 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 force students to make those kinds of decisions, right? And kudos to what you all are doing in Georgia to help address that situation head on. We are there with you. We're there to support you in making the student experience more affordable and a high quality academic experience, having the material before the start of class rather than three weeks in or not buying it at all, right? So um, a quick overview of Boundless. We are a next generation digital publisher, um, have the following characteristics of what we provide. First is um, high quality uh, material. Um, we, we, we work with you all, the community, if you will, of practitioners out there, um, faculty, et cetera. There are over 400 quali uh, qualified subject matter experts that have helped us to date, and that number is growing all the time. We then apply a very rigorous instruction design and editorial practice to enable the creation of high quality course materials, which I will demonstrate to you later today. Those digital textbooks or what we call courseware are very modular and flexible. Almost everything that goes out our door gets modified for the faculty member of the institution in some way. So we really wanna make sure that you all as faculty, as, as staff at, at, at colleges and universities have access to highly customizable digital textbooks. The material we provide is ready to go. We already have 25 uh, full-length uh, 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 digital textbooks in support of courses, and that number is growing every day. It is ready-made, so working in this open, open educational resource space, it is um, 
if you're a faculty member looking for materials in that OER environment, it's a daunting exercise to go and identify what are quality materials, what will meet my needs, what will support the learning objectives that are part of the course that I am teaching today, has the right uh, amount of interactivity, et cetera, right? That's a lot of work. Well, we, t we take that he heavy burden, we carry that heavy burden for you. We go identify all that course material. We bring it in one spot, which again, I'll show you in a bit here. And then you can customize that to your heart's delight from that point forward. But we, we've gone and accumulated what we believe are the best materials out there, put it in a package, a digital textbook, that then is highly customizable. Part of that ready to go is, as well, um, it, it is deeply integrated with your learning management system and literally can be launched in days rather than weeks or months, right? The fourth element here is it's outcomes oriented. We have a content development paradigm where we start at the end. We start with the learning outcomes as the backbone and then fill in the content and assessments aligned to each of those outcomes. Those outcomes are also categorized by Bloom's level in case that's an important uh, criterion for you to use relative to how you're teaching with your, your students. We also reinforce a very active learning model, and, and again, I'll highlight that in some of the demonstrations. A key element, obviously, why, we're, why Boundless is in this business in support of you all is um, we want to make sure it's affordable. We want to make sure that students have these materials in their hands at the start of class. And so um, our, our pricing is $30 per student per course. And at volume, we can drive that price lower uh, on behalf of the student. Or if the academic institution is purchasing the, uh, the digital textbooks or courseware on behalf of their students. By the way, the students have access to the, this material for life. It isn't a six month rental or whatever. Um, and you'll see um, the, the, that the students will have access through boundless.com, the material for life. So in other words, when they no longer have access to the materials in the integration with your LMS in Brightspace, because maybe at you know a, a semester after they've taken it, it goes away, their access goes away to that course, well, they have access to the digital materials, the digital textbook, with the reading, their highlights, the quiz scores, et cetera, on boundless.com. Um, Steve, we have yes. a question. Okay. Uh, does the student purchase through the campus bookstore or directly from you? They can do both. It's totally up to what you all want at your particular campus. They can purchase using a credit card directly inside the LMS um, as part of the integration experience, or they can go to the campus bookstore, purchase an access code, and then use that access code uh, within the uh, LMS to get access to their assignments, their reading assignments, quiz assignments, et cetera. As part of that, we also provide the bookstore with a discount, and I can discuss that later, so that all students pay the, pay the same price. Um, but yet, we, give, we provide the, the sale at, on our side to the bookstore for the access code um, so that, that um, when they add their markup, every student is paying the same price. Um, in addition, the bookstore does not have to purchase in advance. We actually invoice in arrears, so there's no risk to the bookstore. They're not buying inventory in advance of the sale uh, and then have unused inventory that they purchased. Um, we don't do that model. We, we invoice in arrears. Any other questions or comments, Jeff, about kind of who we are as Boundless? No, I had to take up a presenter role for a little bit. Um, are you clicking on the arrows right above your slides? Oh, so I'm on the I'm I'm on my slide. Sorry. Do you? Oh, okay. Um, should I move out and follow you? Um, if you're on here on the WebEx Training Center, um, it should be showing your slides perfect. right now. Yep, that's perfect. Thank you. Yep, Sorry, and if I you will click do that. The arrows that'll that'll yep, do. Yeah, that'll be great. Thanks. Sorry, I wasn't where you're doing. I was displaying inside. Okay. No problem. Um, yes, and let's see. Any any other questions or comments? It looks like none. Okay, so we'll keep moving. Great. 
Um, again, focusing on our content development paradigm, we we operate in a textbook replacement model. So in other words, instead of the student having to purchase a $150, $200 textbook, what have you, they're purchasing boundless at $30 per student per course, right? Again, our focus is on the creating high quality content that's equal or better with any textbook that they would have purchased, right? But at a fraction of the cost. How do we do that? First, we identify elements in the openly licensed domain. So public domains, open websites, and OER materials. We're very good at scouring those resources that are available. We then put that into a particular structure. We then synthesize that into within that structure so that we, we curate and we then content edit the material to bring it to a very high level of quality, both instructional design as well as content quality, editorial quality. We then subject to, uh, bring that to uh, a peer review, right? So that your peers, faculty out there are reviewing this to make sure it's of the quality that would be ready. And then, um, undergoes a final review and then delivered. We then have continuous improvement. We have um, individuals, faculty members, et cetera, reviewing the material on the website constantly. And so we're constantly updating that material. Go on forward. Um, as I mentioned, we, we are highly module, modular and flexible. So almost everything that goes out our door gets customized in some way. How do we do that? How do we do it so quickly? We, we use the following learning triad, if you want to call it that. The learning objective, again, is the backbone. We then align very specific content elements to that specific learning objective and assessment items to that learning objective. So those become like Lego blocks that you can intersperse, you can you know mix and match as you desire. So you can mix some sociology, some biology, some psychology, whatever it is that you are using in your course, it's very easy for us to help you do that. What we typically do is we ask for you to provide us with a syllabus. And um, within uh, that, we, we take that syllabus and usually within about 24 hours, we will send you back an alignment spreadsheet. That alignment spreadsheet will have then, on the left side, we'll have your course, your, your learning objectives, your sequence that you're teaching things based on your syllabus. On the right side, then, will be our digital textbook that is aligned to what you're teaching in your syllabus. So again, that's the first step for customization. Once you give us the thumbs up on that, and, and you'll, you can, we can go back and forth until it's just right, once you give us the thumbs up, then we go and create the custom courseware, a custom digital textbook. Um, and uh, so then we deliver that within usually about 24 hours as well. So again, we can get that out the door to you very, very quickly. Next slide. Um, again, part of that deployment in weeks and months is one, we can take from syllabus to courseware in a matter of days. And we then provide seamless integration with the, the learning management system of your choice. And again, Brightspace is what we're going to demonstrate here today. Obviously, data analytics is key. Faculty and students want two primary areas of need. One, what is the progress of my students against their assignments? And then two, what is the performance of my students in those assignments? Same thing, the students want the same thing. Where am I relative to my assignments? And then two, how did I do on those assignments, right? So we provide progress and performance metrics to both the student and the faculty through the LMS, through the gradebook. And we'll show you that here in a bit. We also, though, are, are capturing lots of data behind that and in addition to that. And so if your campus is using something like a Civitas or a Blue Canary or Hobson's or something else, we can, we can feed those, those analytics centers as well through an API structure. So again, we're collecting lots of data, but the key is we're measuring progress and performance and supplying Obviously, we want to have an engaging student experience, and we we focus on interactive content. We um, I'll, I'll show you 
examples, but we want of, of, of what we call atoms, which is the most finite unit uh, of use in, in, in our platform. For We want one interactive element for every three atoms. That is our goal. That's what our, we work towards, right? And we'll show you some examples of that today. Um, it works across all devices, whether it be on a computer, a tablet, or smartphone. We use what's called responsive design, and it will morph. In other words, it will display depending on what display area or surface area you need, right? Um, the third is um, we're working towards WCAG 2.0. So in addition to the 508, and, and I, we can uh, give you the URL for our VPAT relative to 508 and ADA, we're working now towards that higher standard of WCAG 2.0 for um, accessibility for students that, that need advanced accessibility. And then lastly, again, uh, obviously it's affordable, $30 per student per course. And again, the student has access to this forever. There's no expiring license. And the students can either purchase directly through the, uh, through the LMS or through boundless.com or through the university bookstore. That's kind of a quick overview. What I'd like to do next is move to the demo, but any other questions or comments before I do that? Doesn't sound like any, is that correct, Jeff? Yeah. I'm not seeing any here. All right, great. I'm gonna move over then, and I'm gonna move to an application. I'm gonna go to Chrome. So let's see, there we go. All right. All right. So what we've done is we've integrated, obviously, with Brightspace, and um, really just really enjoy the D2L platform, the high degree of configuration capability, but just the ease of use. And I'm really excited about the new interface that's coming out that they, they highlighted at D2L Fusion a few weeks ago. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead. You can see that we're in a, uh, in Brightspace here. I'm going to click on this course. It's in bio. And you'll see that we're using, in our integration, a fairly standard uh, uh, interface, you know, kind of the default interface. Your interface might differ from this depending on what customization you've done at your particular institution. Um, the balance assignments show up right here. I'm going to actually click on the content area and show you it shows up there as well. Um, what I'm going to do is go in first as a faculty member. I'm going to show you how to create an assignment. We're going to go over to the student side. We'll show you what the student experience is. Then we're going to come back to the faculty side. So um, we'll, we'll move kind of effortlessly from faculty to student and back to faculty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create an assignment. So when I do that, I'm going to click on this boundless link that's available up here. It's going to open this new tab simply because we're we're doing some things that that uh, be required. You'll see that it'll show up in the LMS. I'm just going to create a new assignment. And again, all this is happening on the fly through this deep integration. I'm going to select the date. I'm going to select the chapter. So I'll do chapter three. Boundless is meant to be a textbook replacement. Therefore, we serve as a homework-oriented exercise, right? Formative uh, in, in nature, not summative. You're doing summative things outside of the textbook, you know, through tests, through uh, projects, etc. So we have two assignable types. One is a reading, the other is a quiz. I'm going to first do the reading assignment, and I'm going to place it in the boundless assignments area. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to do the same for the quiz for that same chapter. So let me grab the same chapter. I'm going to do the quiz. And I'm going to create the assignment. I'll put it in boundless assignments, and I'll create that. So let me close this tab. I'm now going to reload this intro to bio. And we'll see that if I go back to content, those two assignments show up on the fly. Everything in, through this integration is happening in real time, right? Okay, so um, with that, I'm going to move now to the student experience, and we'll see that these assignments will show up real time. And um, so let me go ahead and share that. I need to go back to here and share. I'm going to share Firefox. And can you see this okay as well? It should say, welcome, Eva, here are your courses. See that okay, Jeff? Yes. 
perfect. So now I'm going to the same course, but now I'm as a, coming in as a student, right? And I'm going to click on Intro to Bio. And again, I can get through the assignments here, or I can get through here at Content. I'm going to go ahead through the content side. You're seeing, again, these two assignments we just created are now showing up immediately for this student. Let's say I want to go to this reading. I'll show you what that reading experience looks like. So I'm going to open that up. We're going to take advantage of the iframe or the window, the amount of space that the, the browser, Brightspace, has made available to us here. I'm going to open this first chapter, The Chemical Foundation of Life. You can see that our system is automatically uh, identifying about how much time it will take the student to review this. This is based on what's called a flesh Kincaid standard. It's a reading level standard. Um, so based on how many words a, a particular grade level can, can read it in, in a particular amount of time. We use, um, for higher education, we use, you know, obviously grade 13, 14 is our reading level standard. But we can go up or we can go down from there. It's up to you uh, as part of the customization. I'm going to go ahead and go back and start reading this here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go to the top. This a little bit smaller so you can see it a bit better. All right, so every um, we're in the first concept, right, of this chapter. This concept, uh, there's 22 concepts in the chapter. It's, again, going to take us about an hour to read the whole chapter. We're going to see down below how long it'll take to read this concept of this atom. Every concept has the following format. We have a title. We have a brief, usually one sentence summary of what's covered during in that concept. We have a learning objective. And again, all of these can be edited to your heart's delight. That's part of the customization capability. We then have key points. You'll see that there's four key points here in this concept. These key points are um, also manifest or displayed in PowerPoint slides that automatically get created for any book that's in our in, in our library. So if we customize that and you customize some of the key points, then the PowerPoint will also be customized or modified. We then provide key terms. There's three key terms in this concept. Those key terms automatically show up in a flashcard reader that's available to students, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. We then get into the full body of the material. Again, it's showing here this is Estimates can take about three minutes to review the material in this concept. We purposely chunk our concepts or atoms to fairly finite levels. In other words, it's, it's, it's known through cognitive psychology the, and cognitive science that if you chunk things into more finite units and then uh, the students can, can absorb and retain that material better. We're also going to do some things inside here that will further enhance that retention capability. So the student's going to go ahead and start reading, reviewing this. And you can see this student has already captured a highlight and taken a note. Again, these notes and highlights, quiz results, reading progress will all be manifest on boundless.com. So when the student no longer has access to the course materials in Brightspace, they will have access to it in boundless.com, including their notes and highlights, et cetera. Uh, for example, let's just click on this note. This student said, well, okay, there's this concept of the atomic mass unit. And for some reason, he or she decided that uh, she wanted to dis discuss the atomic mass unit with the study group first before talking with the faculty member. Again, all these notes and highlights are available to the student at any time. You can see we can use any media type that's available. In fact, I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to use this interactive here. I'm going to click on this interactive. What we're going to do is we're going to build an atom. And again, these interactives are purposely placed and positioned so that they're reinforcing what the student has read earlier, right? And, um, and so through some active learning, they're reinforcing what they've read previously. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to build an atom. I'm going to start with a neutron. I'm going to throw a proton in here. Okay, I've created a hydrogen atom. And that's reinforced through the periodic table, but it's in plus ionic state. Well, what if I throw an electron in there? Okay, I've neutralized it. Very cool. What if I add another neutron, another proton? All right, I've created helium atom, again, reinforced in the periodic table, plus ionic state. I want to 
Neutralize, perfect. What if I had a third electron? Okay, so now it's in minus ionic state, but also I, I'm re, it's reinforcing what I, I learned above. Oh yeah, the inner orbital shell only has capacity for two electrons. It's thrown that electron into the next available orbital shell. Okay, goodness. Uh, it's a good thing because I'm reinforcing what I read earlier. So through these active learning models, we're reinforcing and, and, and further enhancing the retention of this knowledge and skill on behalf of the student. So I'll go ahead and cancel that out and move on down. Um, you'll also notice at the bottom of every concept, we have the sources. All material that's in uh, the boundless library, it, it operates under the, what we call the CC by SA license, Creative Commons Share Alike license. What that means is we must provide attribution. In other words, we must attribute all of our source materials in the content, and we do that here. Just as similarly, when um, anybody that is using boundless material must also cite boundless, right? That's just how the Creative Commons share alike world works. And we purposely use share alike because you can create derivative works from that material. We want you to be able to modify this material to your particular needs. All right, so that's the reading for this. Um, I'm going to go back to intro bot to bio and go back up to my content. We also provide quizzes. I won't open that just for the sake of time here today, but um, I'll just say, I'll just highlight the fact that we provide 50 different, 57 different assessment format types, and that's growing it, you know, every year. Um, so, for example, you have multiple choice and multiple types of multiple choice. We also then have, uh, you know, drag and drop, fill in the blank, uh, equation generators for mathematical oriented uh, type work, et cetera. So, um, a very robust uh, assessment framework as well. Uh, let's see. Um, so that's the assignable types. And again, they're all happening right here within uh, the, the Brightspace environment. You can also look at grades. Those students always have access to their grades, both progress and performance on assignments. That's always available to them. In addition, there, you'll notice that the student also has this boundless area. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And we will see that the students also have access to some other resources. As I mentioned, they have access to flashcards. These are built based on the key terms that were provided in the courseware. We looked at that in that concept level and the four key terms that were in the concept we were reviewing. They also have access to practice quizzes here. These are not graded, whereas the quizzes, if you want, as a vacuum member, are graded in the uh, 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 assignable area. Also, all their notes and highlights across all the chapters in this digital textbook are available to them here. So all that's available at their fingertips as they need, right? Um, so that's it for the student experience. Any questions or comments, Jeff, based on the student experience before I go back to the faculty side? Uh, oh, we have one. Uh, are you able to customize how that gets incorporated into your menu within D2L, or does it have to go to a particular place? That's totally up to you. I mean, D2L, the Brightspace environment, is highly uh, 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 configurable, right? And so we just use kind of the out-of-the-box configuration here. That's really up to you and your LMS administrator as to where you want to place these different assignment assets. And again, that's very flexible and customizable thanks to what D2L has provided. We've just used the out-of-the-box kind of configuration with essentially no or very little uh, 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 modification. But again, that's up to you and your LMS, and LMS administrator as to where you want to place these kinds of assignment assets. Uh, we get another question, can the boundless quiz scores be published to the D2L gradebook? Uh, yes, exactly. They will be, they're published to the gradebook. And in fact, let me, that's a great transition. I'm going to move back over to um, Chrome. Can you see that, Jeff? I don't know if WebEx is when I'm, it looks like I'm sharing two applications. So you should be able to see this. Right? Yeah, I, I see that you're on the introduction to biology page. Table of contents. Yes. 
Perfect. That's a great segue. It's going back to the faculty view and the student view. Student has access to it as well, but the faculty then has access to the grade book. And you'll see the quizzes and the readings all show up here in your grade book as well, right? And you can manually override these, et cetera. Again, where that shows up in the grade book is totally dependent on how you and your LMS administrator have configured your Brightspace environment. But yes, it's full grade pass back as part of the integration. You don't have to go anywhere else to, to um, view the material. Uh, we got, were the grade items created by bounds lists? The graded items. Were the graded items created by bound lists? Well, the graded items here are of two types. The reading assignment and all that they get. And you can determine what the point level should be, right? You can change that on the fly. You can say it's only 10 points rather than 100 or whatever, right? Um, and so that's customizable by you, and then it shows up, did they finish the reading or not? And you can create, maybe you don't want to assign points to that. We recommend you do because it creates some incentive to finish the homework, and you know that all the students have completed the reading assignment. And when you bring them together in class, whether it be in person or virtual, you can now have the, the deep uh, discussion about applying the information they learned, right? Things like that. Same thing with the quizzes. You can assign the points, however many points you want, and um, then monitor their activity. You can see the students here. These are just some samples we put, but they had various levels of success uh, uh, against that quiz item. So were the quiz items, I, I think the question is like, are the evaluations, the quiz items, are those created by Boundless or are those brought in elsewhere? Oh, I'm sorry, thank you so much. We create them, but you can modify them to your heart's delight. You can use what we have. You can you can modify those. You can add new ones. You can throw some of ours away. Again, it's fully customizable depending on what you need. But yes, we we provide quiz items that are that are associated or linked to the learning outcomes that are in our material, right? Because we want to make sure if there's a learning outcome. That, that, that there's an opportunity to evaluate has the student mastered or demonstrated competency against that particular learning outcome or learning objective. All right, thanks. Great, fantastic, thank you. All right, um, let's do one other thing for this faculty member. I wanna go in and show you how easy it is to customize the material. So I'll click on this boundless link again in the faculty area. We're going to be brought to this page where, again, I've already assigned this book, Boundless Biology. Um, let's go say I want to customize it. You could do it here, or you could have done it already in Boundless.com. Well, I'm going to click on Customize Book. And again, this is something you probably wouldn't do during the middle of the semester, but maybe you're at the between semesters and you want to go in and customize it. And this is how you want to access it. All right, you're, you're going to see here that we will um, um, log you in automatically. We know who you are because this book over here has been assigned by you to this particular course. So we know who you are and so we just log you in automatically. It's coming in as Eva, that's a content associate on, on our team here at Boundless um, who did this setup for me. Let's say I want to go in and I want to go say, let's say um, the Chemical Foundation of Life and there's three sections here. One is atoms, water, and carbon. Say I want to do a little bit about organic before I get into carbon. Well, let me go ahead and search the Boundless Library. I'm going to go to organic. And all right, here's the section organic compounds. Perfect. It has a nice introductory section and concept. So I'm going to drag that over. And again, it's easy as this. I can put it wherever I want. It will reorder. So once I drop this in, you'll notice now it's renumbered the sections. And let's say I want to go in and modify that introduction to organic compounds. Perfect. And now I'm ready. Say if I wanted to go in and modify this concept, or I could even add my own new concept if I wanted and create something from scratch as well. Suppose I want to go ahead and modify this. I could say I could go in and maybe I get into the full body of the material and I want to put in a new 
image or something like that, I could go ahead and do something like that as well. So um, again, it's very, very customizable on your behalf. Um, I'll go ahead and leave this. I'm, I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to make those changes to it. But again, it's all just very flexible and customizable, nice, simple drag and drop, easy to use interface. Um, all on your behalf uh, as a faculty member or an instructional designer. So I'll go ahead and cancel that and close that. Um, that's it for the demo. Any questions or comments relative to uh, the, the, the boundless experience within Brightspace? I'll go and close with some other items as well, but anything else relative to the Brightspace boundless integration? Okay, how would you pair your Boundless course with your D2L courses? Ah, great, great. Typically what we do is we operate in a textbook replacement model. So, for example, we're in a biology course. So maybe I used to use Campbell Biology, but cow, only 30% of my students were buying the book because it was so expensive, right? Um, well, and it's a great book. Uh, Campbell Biology is fantastic. But Maybe you decide you're going to replace Campbell with the boundless biology. That's where we come in. We integrate right into the LMS with your assignment structure, with your syllabus. So what you would do is email us your syllabus. We would then create an alignment to your syllabus. And once you give us a thumbs up in the spreadsheet view, we would then uh, um, 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 create the custom courseware that then gets integrated just like we're seeing here. So if I go back to intro to bio, and review this, you would create, you've, you've assigned the boundless textbook. This is boundless biology, right? And then you've created assignments based on that, reading, quiz assignments, et cetera. So essentially you're replacing the textbook with the boundless material. And we become integrated right here in the LMS through assignment types that show up in the grade book and the assignment area, et cetera. Now, obviously, you're going to have lots of other things that we're just one of the many assignable types. Um, you might have projects. You're going to have quizzes, uh, other quizzes. Maybe you're going to have tests. You're going to have uh, whatever else you do in your course. Um, boundless is just one of the many assignable types that are available there. And this is an LTI integration, right? It's a mixture of LTI, learning tools interoperability, which is an IMS standard, yes. But we also leverage APIs that uh, Brightspace has made available to us and other vendors. We're in the app finder. We're one of the approved apps in the Brightspace environment. So we've been vetted at, 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 in terms of security and all those types of things that, that, that would enable us to become an approved app within the Brightspace environment. So yes, it's LTI plus API. Oh, what subjects do you cover? Ah, fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to now move to another browser. Sorry, I have all three browsers running here. <laughs> um, here we go. Um, great question. What subjects do we offer? I'd encourage you to go to boundless.com, and then um, if you scroll down at any time, you'll see our subjects down below. So here's the the subjects, by the way, these are being updated uh, as we speak. For example, economics is being subdivided into macro and micro. It was formerly all in one. Uh, U.S. history is being subdivided into pre and post reconstruction. We also are subdividing world history into pre 1400, so post 1400 something. Um, so again, we're constantly updating this. We're also adding new titles. We have some math education titles that are coming of, of, uh, to four. We have an advanced uh, uh, advertising. So again, we're working with authors in the community who are now publishing on Boundless. And so you're going to start to see this library grow and grow. But you're welcome to go in and, and peruse any of these. What I'd recommend you do is click on this sign up button in the upper right. And then go in as an educator and sign up as an educator. Just create an account, and you will have access to everything that's available within any one of these subjects, accounting, biology, chemistry, et cetera, as an educator. And it's only when you assign it to the student 
that there's a charge involved, and that's the twenty nine ninety nine, which again is a fraction of what they would pay even for a, a rental or, or, or a used textbook, right, for a particular course. So um, that's when the student gets charged, and that's again when we work with you on the integration with Brightspace, which we, is very easy to do because uh, of, of just the tight integration that Brightspace has enabled us to do with them. Any other questions or comments? I do not see any yet. Okay. Again, I'd be happy to show you, uh, you know, details about, uh, you know, what happens inside this environment. But again, the, the core is um, we want the we, we encourage you to use the Brightspace environment. It's it's where it's your portal that you're interacting with your students, and and then. Um, we create the assign assignments, the assignable textbook, as well as the reading and quiz assignments, as well as the flashcard and other features that the student has, notes and highlights, et cetera, all within this Brightspace environment. The nice thing about that, too, let me show you real quick. If I go over to the student experience and I click back into that assignment, um, is just the nature of the responsive design. In other words, it um, morphs based on the real estate that's available to you as a student. So um, again, this thing is much too big. You zoom. There we go. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can see it. But as I go in through this material, then this will morph as part of what's available to the students. So as I get down to a certain, there's some minimum that the browser, that the Brightspace environment uh, creates, but you can see it will morph depending on the, the surface area available for a particular device, whether it be a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. Um, so going back then to the uh, presentation, Let's see, how do I get back to that? Um, do you know, Jeff, how do I get back to... Oh, I can change that. I'll just go back to the slides. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, just to summarize then, um, going back again, we're focusing on... Whoops. There we go. Focusing on quality, we, we're working with you all as faculty. That's our community that we 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 work with. We're only as good as as, as the, the 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 highly qualified subject matter experts we're working with. Very modular and flexible, ready to go. We can have this in your hands, ready to go within days rather than weeks. It's outcomes oriented, so it supports the outcomes that you're teaching. Again, those are modifiable based on the, the, the customizability of courseware. And bottom line, it's affordable for your students. Any other questions, comments? I'm curious, any um, particular needs, any particular subject domains that you might have interest in using, uh, if we want to talk through any of those? Nope, doesn't sound like it. Okay, well, again, feel free to go to uh, boundless.com, peruse any of the subject matter uh, areas that we cover. If you don't see something, please let me know. We're actually in the process of working with a number of faculty right now on areas that don't show up on our website, so you might have something coming soon that would be uh, aligned to what your particular needs are. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for uh, sharing Boundless with us today. I think it's been very helpful, and we have some really good questions. Um, Amy and James, thank you for the many questions you've been asking uh, throughout the session. Uh, I'm just going to go to our survey, and I'm going to link it to you in chat. Um, please fill out this form. Uh, that will allow us to understand how your experience was and help us improve our training and development series. 
Um, I've pasted that into chat because these are not clickable on the uh, Training Center whiteboard. And thank you all for coming. Have a good, affordable, wonderful day. Thank you all as well.